I miss that dude every day, bro, just because of he was like a, a level of greatness that you could keep in front of you every day because you knew he was working towards something. So if he continues to work, why not you? You're not too, nobody's too good to keep working on their craft or whatever it is. So Cole was like, I remember during the season when we won the championship, he told me to do a few things that were crazy, bro. Just like, yo, just, <laughs> I wish I could tell y'all the full story. I'll tell y'all off stream, but, cause some of the things are not meant for kids. You know what I mean? Some of it's like real adult mature stuff that you got to understand that's, when somebody tells you do some, something for the greater good of the team, it's not always going to sound like the, the best thing, and you got to be able to know how to take that advice and apply it. But for him, yeah, 2016, he told me to really start isolating myself a little bit more to get a greater sense of who I am and how you have to approach every, every day. Like that was the, That's the best Kobe story I could give is his approach to life, his approach to the game of basketball was something that was transformative. It gave us a hero to look up to. But also, he didn't want to be looked up to as a hero. He wanted to always let you know, you want to be better than me. Don't, don't try to strive to be where I'm at. Try to strive to go past. And if you can't go past, then keep striving for your own goals. So he was like a, a the perception of him was so crazy, too. Let's not forget that people were on the Kobe hate train for a while. Like, he wasn't the, always the most favorite athlete. I know some of you guys have your favorite athletes here, and you'll go to bat for them. But Kobe was like one of those ones that made it out the fire media turned on him, fans turned on him. And to be a Kobe fan when you were younger during those times, like you really had to have those tough conversations. So I asked him all those questions on how he dealt with it mentally, spiritually, emotionally, how he really got closer with his wife and his kids, how he was more open to life when he left the league because he didn't have to be competitive with us anymore. Like that's what I'm trying to share with you guys is when we're in the league, yeah, we're all friends and cool and stuff like that, but it's real competition. We're trying to feed our families and win at a very high level. So you got to be able to separate like those that are really close to you and then those that, you know, your competition. So Cole always split the line though. He wasn't close with anybody. He wasn't working out with anybody in the summer. He would only give a few people the information that were willing to listen. So you had to initiate yourself as a student. Like, I know nothing, teach me. How many of us are, you know, ignorant to the fact that we want to learn from somebody but we don't know how to ask because we, we just think we know it all or we're, we have that ego about us and that's where I feel like that darkness lies in the ego, telling us that we know too much. We never know enough, never know enough. Information is free, but it depends on who you're getting from, but knowledge sticks with you forever and it turns into wisdom as you get older. So these are things that my dad used to tell me when I was younger, I didn't really listen, but now that I'm older, it makes a lot more sense, you know? Because he was a genuine friend, a genuine big brother, and to lose somebody like that was one of the hardest things to deal with, to grieve it, over it, as well as everybody else around the world. Because he didn't just mean something to me, he meant something to his family, people all around the world. And that's how you know somebody did more than just play basketball. They were like, universal. And Kobe isn't the only one he learned from, you know, it could be Bruce Lee, it could be Bill Russell, it could be Malcolm X, it could be Martin Luther King, it could be a myriad of people, of revolutionary people, Bob Marley, it could be revolutionary people that left the ideology for us to become better people and want us to make a positive impact on the world. So you can use, I use the craft of basketball to get me into rooms, but it's not defining me at all. And that's what Cope taught me.